Hey everybody, so on this tips and tricks video, I'm going to be showing you my little technique that I use to make this really cool frosting effect that you see on um, some of the display images. And I have an, uh, a sample of it right here on this fresh and also on this right here, which is like my last display image. And it's this really cool sort of icing kind of um, uh, stacked effect or whatever. So I think it's really fun and it's really easy to do and it gives your text a really cool sort of dimension. Like it's like maybe you had, you know, hand iced it or whatever. So um, first of all, we're going to start off here and I've got some text. I just have the word icing and I have um, my different frosting styles. But the cool thing is, is depending on your design size, you can always adjust them a little bit. So for example, for the base, I have this word icing, and if I click on the frosting deep style, it's a little, just a little bit dark for me on this. So I'm going to, and just in this particular instance, I'm gonna double, um, go to that layer here on my layers panel and double click on the bevel and emboss um, option down here. And I can just adjust it a little bit. And basically um, I'm gonna take this setting the shadow mode, which gives it its dark shadows and it's on hard light 52. And I'm just gonna take that slider down a little bit until it gets to a nice level that I like. So I'll just click okay. And you can always do this on any of your styles. If you find that you, know, you, you can tweak them a little bit because every design is a little bit different, but the styles themselves are really good to use as is and gives you just a great um, head start for your design. So I have the icing text. And now the first one that I'm gonna show you is to do this sort of scalloped edge here. So let's go look at my brushes and I'm gonna scroll down here. And for this particular effect, I believe that I used brush number 30, <coughs> 38, excuse me. Now, if um, you are one of the first ones to buy the product, uh, the brushes might not be numbered, so re-download your product because I was so excited to get it out. I When I first um, released my product, my brushes weren't numbered. So, it's brush number 38 and it looks like this. You can see the little um, the little thumbnail here so you can find it no matter what. But you can really pick any of these. And so what I'm gonna do is create a new layer over that icing layer. And I think I will start out by, I think I'll click on the white frosting thin and we can always adjust this. And then I'm gonna make sure I have my brush. Just go like this, yep, that looks good. And now you might need, if I just do a quick tester here, I can see that this brush is gonna be a little bit big, so I might just take the brush size down a little bit. So I might click on my left bracket, perhaps twice. Okay, that's a good size that's gonna work out really good for this. So what I do in this technique is I put it over the icing layer and I try to kind of get, I play around with it a little bit, but I try to um, paint it right on kind of the border where the shadow is. And so when you do that, it will kind of um, blend in a lot. So you can just kind of play around with it. Um, and what's cool is you can get a different effect like when you go different ways with your brushes. Yeah, that's pretty much the, the brush that I used. So if you're going an upward stroke, it's gonna give you a different effect or a downward stroke, it will give you a different effect. And I might actually pop over here and click on like brush number 40 and I'll put it that's about the same. I think the one that I used was 38. So I'll just take the size down a little bit. That's pretty much perfect. So what's cool is um, I just, you know, I kind of play around with it, but I do it right on the middle of the wide strokes and where the shadow meets the light. And sometimes I don't want it to go up here. So I'll start drawing it just a little bit lower and then you'll just have it, you know, 
don't worry about it being perfect, but that gives you a good idea. And so when you get it kind of on that sweet spot in the middle there, you're, it's going to blend into this side and then overlap the shadow side. So it just gives it a really cool dimensional and really cool icing sort of effect. So I'm going to go through and do the same thing on the thick strokes of this font. And uh, you can always just click undo if it doesn't go perfect, but kind of play around with it and you'll kind of just see what works. You know, if you go more on this side, it's going to give it, if you know, you go more on that side of it, it'll give it just a slightly more subtle effect. Or if you want more drama, go right on the edge so it's really hanging over. But you know, you'll, you'll see when it looks good. But I kind of just go right here in that middle, right where the shadow meets. And I think it looks really cool. And it gives this, this uh, icing just a really cool sort of dimensional effect. And I think I will do it even on this, this side right here. But you see, if I put it more too much over to the right, then you got that shadow so it doesn't look quite as cool. So I try to straddle that shadow and then it blends in with the other side. So that looks really cool. And then like that. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how I do that technique. And I think it just really makes your icing sort of styles pop and it's really fun. And you know, you can play around with the different, um, depending on, you know, the size that you're working with. You can try the delicate style frosting, but that gives it like, that's for very small things. I think thin kind of hits the sweet spot with that. And then you've got thin strong, if you want more drama, medium, it gives it a totally different appearance. This is very cool too. The, it's kind of a puffy sort of appearance. And medium one, that's like also cool. Honestly, there's so many different kinds of things you can do with this, but I think that's really neat. And you can just make some cool effects. And then also on the last image, I use this more intricate sort of brush. So I will, let's just duplicate my layer here. I'm going to still work with the thin and let's go to my brushes on this one. I think, oh yeah, I use this brush number 49. It was one of the last brushes and let me see which way, I, which way I, I stroked it if it was up or down. Let's see here. Ah, that's it. So this brush is just a little bit too big. Yeah, I'm going to select all. I'm going to cut that. Take my brush size down a few notches. Yeah, that looks cool. So I'm going to do the same thing. And basically, you know, kind of go within here, anywhere in the center of the stroke. And I don't start at the top because usually they'll, it'll overlap too much. So I kind of start just a little bit below and just kind of, you know, you'll get the hang of it, but painting along and straddling the line of that shadow. And soon you'll really get the hang of it. And how fun are these icing effects? I don't know why, but it just makes me really happy. So there we go. That's a little drama. And just make sure that you, I don't know if I'm going to put it on this one up here. It might be too, well, that's okay. Um, but always kind of go in the same direction. And that way you, whenever, so this one, we're going down stroke, down stroke, down stroke, down stroke, always the same. So that's a whole other kind of effect. And it looks like a, maybe you're a pastry chef or something and you did this really cool sort of filigree sort of icing on the lettering. So super fun. I hope this was informative to you. And if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments. And hopefully you guys will have tons of fun working with this new, um, this new set of this new creative kit. So if you have any other suggestions, questions, or tutorials you want to see, just let me know.